Hi, ako si Ben Suerbe, Gikan sa Misami sa Occidental. Mabani ako si Cardinal Chito Matag Domingo sa The Word Exposed sa Jesscom TV. Talagang salamat. Ako po si Brother Tony Rebater from San Mateo Rizal. At samahan niyo po kami ni Cardinal Chito tuwing linggo sa The Word Exposed. Dito lamang po sa Jesscom TV. May at ayan nga adlaw kanyo tanan. Ako si Robert Kibes, nga taga-aklan. Inaimbitahan ko kamo nga magpamantaw at The Word Exposed kay Bahan si Cardinal Chito Tagle sa Jesscom TV kada Domingo. Friends, greetings of joy and peace. I trust that you are well. Please continue exposing the Word with us every Sunday. Subscribe to Jesscom TV, then watch and share the Word Exposed on your feed. Thank you. Ciao, mabuhay. You are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word incarnate, revealing Himself to us in the Sunday readings. We are on the fifth Sunday of Lent. And in today's Gospel, we will hear about the case of a woman who had been caught in adultery. The scribes and Pharisees brought the poor woman to Jesus so that they could have some charge to bring against Him. But Jesus saw through their motive. He asked them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. None of the scribes and Pharisees threw a stone at the woman. Jesus then sent the woman, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. Jesus gave the poor woman another chance. This is how God deals with us. This is also how we ought to deal with one another. A new life awaits us. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Who opens a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, who leads out chariots and horsemen, a powerful army, till they lie prostrate together, never to rise, snuffed out and quenched like a wick. Remember not the events of the past, the things of long ago consider not. See, I am doing something new. Now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? In the desert, I make a way. In the wasteland, rivers, wild beasts honor me, jackals and ostriches. For I put water in the desert and rivers in the wasteland for my chosen people to drink, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might announce my praise. The Word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God, depending on faith to know him and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. It is not that I have already taken hold of it or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit in hope that I may possess it, since I have indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I, for my part, do not consider myself to have taken possession. Just one thing, forgetting what lies behind, but straining forward to what lies ahead. I continue my pursuit toward the goal, the prize of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus. The Word of the Lord. Look at what lies ahead. We are very close to the Holy Week, and uh, with Jesus we hope to see what lies ahead. Of course, what lies ahead is Calvary, His cross. But what lies ahead is also the new life that He will offer to us through His death and resurrection. In the first reading from Isaiah, Israel is promised that they could come home again, a people in exile. And God will do something new for them. God is quite consistent in his action towards uh, Israel. Remember what God did to Israel when, when the people was in Egypt as slaves, how God led them to new life. But then Israel failed, and so now they're in exile, the Babylonian exile, because of their own infidelities. But God, who is rich in mercy, promised, I will do new things for you, and the desert will be filled with water, so that you can drink again. My people will not be thirsty again. I will do this for the sake of my people, and you will praise me. A people who used to lament will now be filled with praise of God. So the prophet is telling the people, look at what lies ahead. Look at what God will do for you. And look with anticipation at the new life of praise because God has been faithful to you. Look with hope at what lies ahead. In the second reading, St. Paul shares his personal experience. With Jesus, he found his wealth, what he used to consider as valuable, before getting to know Jesus, now, in the light of Jesus, in the light of his knowledge of Jesus, in the light of his union with Jesus, all of those things he considers rubbish. Look at how the vision of St. Paul about his life, his priorities, has been changed by what Jesus has done for him. And so now, for him, life is not something Life is a person, Jesus. Jesus is life for him. So even his human life is led in faith in Jesus, 
in surrender to Jesus. A beautiful testimony on the part of someone who used to persecute the followers of Jesus. And now, what a, a change. What a change. Now, today, Jesus is his life. And all the other things that he used to consider gain now is considered loss, a loss. Now, we might say, oh, uh, St. Paul, you are, you are, are, are exceptional you know, uh, because you have had this vision. But St. Paul is very humble. He says, I still push forward to what lies ahead. He wants to share in Jesus' cross so that he would share in the glory of his resurrection. He runs the race. There is no stopping. There is no complacency. There is no laxity. He looks at what lies ahead and pushes on with God's grace. Do we have the same vision? Do we have the same drive? Please, with St. Paul, let us say, let me run the race so that I could attain to the glory that lies ahead. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to John Jesus went out to the Mount of Olives. At daybreak, he reappeared in the temple area, and when the people started coming to him, he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees led the woman forward who had been caught in adultery. They made her stand there in front of everyone. Teacher, they said to him, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses ordered such women to be stoned. What do you have to say about the case? They were posing this question to trap him so that they could have something to accuse him of. Jesus simply bent down and started tracing on the ground with his finger. When they persisted in their questioning, he straightened up and said to them, let the man among you who has no sin be the first to cast a stone at her. A second time he bent down and wrote on the ground. Then the audience drifted away one by one, beginning with the elders. This left him alone with the woman who continued to stand there before him. Jesus finally straightened up again and said to her, Woman, where did they all disappear to? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she answered. Jesus said, Nor do I condemn you. You may go, but from now on, avoid this sin. The Gospel of the Lord Look at what lies ahead. Of course, as the Holy Week approaches, we are looking ahead at the death of Jesus and also His resurrection that is a promise of new life for us. There is a consistency of, in God's action in salvation history. In the first reading, how the people in exile is promised a new future, which is again God's action, the desert will be filled with streams of water, and they, from lamentation, will sing praise to God. What lies ahead? In the second reading, the experience of St. Paul, his knowledge of Jesus becomes his life. And so the past is reviewed, but he is not complacent. He pushes towards the future, which is to share in the cross of Christ, so that he could share in his glorious resurrection. He runs the race to get the prize. What lies ahead? 
The Gospel for today from St. John is, again, a story known to us. The scribes and Pharisees presented to Jesus a woman who had been caught in adultery. According to the Gospel, the scribes and the Pharisees brought the woman to Jesus in order to trap Jesus. Look at that. They were using the woman, the, the miserable and sad experience of the woman, to trap Jesus. They wanted to know whether Jesus was familiar with the law of Moses, that a woman caught in adultery should be stoned, and whether Jesus would agree with the law of Moses and give like a go signal, okay, let us, let us, uh, uh, let us follow the uh, dictate of Moses. They wanted to trap him, his knowledge of the law and also his compliance with the law. But the motivation is not really about fidelity to the law. They wanted to trap Jesus using this poor woman. Jesus saw through them. So Jesus said, <laughs> let the one among you who is without sin be the first to cast a stone at her. Jesus seems to be saying, well, you know the law. Why did you not execute it? What hinders you? And by saying what he had said, Jesus is saying, look, look at this woman. She was caught committing a sin. Now, those of you who have no sin, you do it. So, he, he asks them not only to look at the woman, but to look at themselves. And what did they see? They saw that they were also sinners. They saw that they were like this woman. This woman was actually a mirror of who they were. And if they thought this woman deserved to be stoned, then they should also say, we deserve to be punished. But will they say that? Or will they tell a lie? We have not sinned, so we have a right to stone her. Now they were trapped, and they, they fled. Look at this. The woman now faces Jesus. Jesus was just and truthful. I do not condemn you, but go and sin no more. Acknowledge the sin, but look at what lies ahead. Not condemnation but the promise of new life. But you must not go back to that sin. So the woman was asked to face herself, but also to face the merciful God, the face of mercy, what lies ahead. My dear brothers and sisters, this is what we need today. There is so much violence there is so much blaming. There is so much stone throwing, casting out, casting stones, casting weapons. But nobody wants to admit we are part of the sin and the problem. What lies ahead is the promise of mercy. May we all humbly work and walk towards that future. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it.
This is the final part of our series on Lenten Keywords. We hope our reflection on the terms resist, transfigure, cultivate, welcome has contributed to your Lenten observance. Let us reflect on the term to go. To go is to move from one place to another. It is also used as a signal for one to leave or to start. We also say go when we send someone to carry out a particular task. Jesus frequently used this term. He instructed the ten lepers, go, show yourselves to the priests. They were sent to proclaim their healing. In today's gospel, we heard Jesus admonishing the woman caught in adultery, go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. But unlike the case of the ten persons with leprosy where one returned to Jesus in thanksgiving, we do not know what happened to the woman. Did she persist in her old ways? Did she change the course of her life? We cannot categorically say, and that is the challenge to us. What would we have done if we were that woman? What would we do if we are sent to sin no more? Reviewing what sin is and thus could help us form an answer. Simply put, sin is an offense, an action that could hurt others. Committing sin makes us unable to love God and our neighbor sincerely. Persisting in sinful ways wounds our relationships. So when we are sent to sin no more, we are sent to stop hurting others, to reconcile with God and neighbors, to rebuild our relationships to leave our old ways, to start a new path that will enable us to love more fully. The risen Lord sent His disciples to forgive sins. Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Through their ministry, people could be sent to sin no more. How could we be sent to sin no more today? by approaching the sacrament of reconciliation. We confess our sins, we receive forgiveness, and are sent as renewed disciples. Pope Francis teaches us, Friends, Jesus forgives and admonishes us. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. Lord, send us. Amen. We have prepared reflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. The first point is, how have you experienced Jesus' offer of new life? Paano mo naranasan ang handog ni Jesus na bagong buhay? The second point is, how can we lead erring neighbors to new life without condemning them? Paano natin maihahatid ang mga kapatid nating nagkamali sa bagong buhay nang hindi sila hinuhusgahan? Heavenly Father, 
You have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people so that as your word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. Lord Jesus, be with us always, your production staff and partners, your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity in fulfilling our mission daily. And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love, so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. Friends, thank you for your company. We pray that the Word of God would find fulfillment in your life and His blessings be always upon you. And we hope you could be with us again next Sunday here on The Word Exposed.